Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you, of course, Photoshop User Bam. Magazine. There it is in all its fantastic, glossy glory. Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User. I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys, and as usual, I am joined by another Photoshop guy. We don't know why. He's just here. Mr. Pete Collins, what's up? Well, this is why I work. I just sit here and y'all can't kick me out. So, actually, um, yes, we, Pete never got an office when he moved in, so when we're not doing the show here, he actually sets up right here. His coffee is sitting right yep. there. So, we'll just have him. So, how, how are you? We're just hanging out with you today. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. all right. What do you have today? I have, I, I sense, I sense some animal. I'm going to be drawing, showing people how to do a caricature, cartoony type of thing. All right. Playing around with Photoshop. Cool. All right, he's going to get to that in just a moment. And then I just want to mention real quick, if you're watching now, make sure you're watching later because tonight is the Photoshop world a -thon. We're having another one. It's going to be tonight, and you're going to be joined by me and Pete, and as well as Mr. Scott Kelby, Matt Kaliskowski. I don't think RC's going to be here. I think he's going to be, he's gone today, isn't he? Uh, he's here. He's, uh, he, he does have something for us that he's dropping in, but he won't oh, be yes. here for the actual. So we'll, he, he'll be here in spirit, yeah. of course. So you need to go into the website. There it is right there. Go to photoshopworld.com slash a fun and uh, go to the sign up and uh, be sure to tune in. That's tonight. I, I missed the time. Was it seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be, seven we're, we're going to have some uh, great tips showing a little bit about the, the different classes that we're going to be teaching, but there's also probably opportunities for you to get stuff. I'm just assuming. Free stuff. I'm, and not, that, I'm, not, I'm not promising. That is what the sign up is for. Go and sign up or you will not, you just, you just can't win by tuning in. Right. It's just not that simple, well, although we wish it were. So go in and sign up. You'll be eligible for a lot of great prizes. So be sure to join us a little bit later today at 7 p.m. That's Eastern Time. So let's get right into it. And Pete is going to have, as I said, I see a cute little cat on his screen. I'm a cheetah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I've been playing around with some different stuff. And one of the things that I like to do is I, I like to work on different uh, caricatures, creatures for, for different illustrations that I want to work on. And, and the whole thing is, a lot of times, um, my stuff is going to look a lot different than, say, Aaron Blaze. Aaron sure. Blaze is phenomenal. He'll sit down, and all of a sudden, he'll sketch out a, a cat that looks phenomenal. Uh, and his stuff is a lot more realistic looking, whereas I want to create more cartoony, uh, storybook kind of animals for kids' books, illustrations, and whatnot. And so I thought today I'd just share with you a little bit of how I kind of go about playing with taking an animal and turning it into a caricature. Because the whole idea behind it is you want to create some sort of uh, illustration of that animal that then you can reproduce fairly easily that shows a character of that animal but isn't so cumbersome that if you're doing a cartoon or whatever you're having to really work on every single uh, aspect of it and so the key is to break down the the elements of the animal to its bare essentials and uh, so I'm going to show you kind of how I, I work on it so if we look at my computer I've got a picture of a cheetah here and uh, I'm, I'm working on a story about a cheetah and so if I was going to come up with kind of my cheetah character, what I'd first do is I'd bring that cheetah image in and put it on its own layer. And then I'd drop the opacity down uh, and then create a new blank layer over the top of it. And once I do that, I choose, I've got different types of brushes that I have in here, but this is one of my favorite brushes. Uh, and I'm just going to come in quickly and I'm going to start tracing out sort of the key elements of the cheetah. Now, I'm using the uh, Wacom uh, tablet, which makes things a lot easier. But to be honest, I still miss my Cintiq when I'm doing it here in the studio. I almost always work with my Cintiq because it's just so much better response and precision. So if you're going to be looking into getting into drawing and doing stuff like that, definitely at least look at the uh, Intuos tablets. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to go to the next level, look at the Cintiq line. It is something that I can't live without. And you can see I'm already kind of taking some liberties here. I'm, I'm, I'm just grabbing some different areas there that I like, and I'm not even getting super refined with it. And now I turn off the bottom layer because it's given me kind of the, the structure of the animal. But what I want to try to do is now create kind of my own bare essentials of this animal. So I now take that little quick sketch and I drop it down even to a light level. I've got it at about 29 percent. 
And now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start drawing out kind of my own thoughts about how this should look. Uh, one of the things with I'm doing a cartoon or a caricature, I want bigger eyes. And so I'm going to start drawing out some big eyes. And then I'm getting some main character points. Cheetahs always have kind of that, I call it the tear stripe coming from the eyes down that I can use to start to develop the nose and the droopiness there. And then I'm just going to kind of give it a chin for right now and then give it some, some smaller ears. I want it to get my, a little bit more streamlined. And now it may be from me watching all of the uh, Pink Panther or whatever, but I want to give it kind of more of a triangular head. So what I'm going to do, because it kind of looked like a bear when I take it to the original, back to the original. So I'm just going to shorten the head a little bit. And I really start getting kind of that little bit right there. And then I'm giving it the neck, sort of like the Pink Panther. And this is what I'll, I'll do. I'll get to this point, and I'm letting each original sketch kind of inform the next thing. And then I'll go, well, you know, this looks OK. But what if I come in now, and I do it one more time, and I make the, uh, I make the head even more triangular? And so I'll start playing around with that. And I'll just start getting a feel for it. And eventually what will happen is I will get to the point where I get something like that, where I'm getting more of the personality. But you can see I've, I've narrowed it down to the eyes, the swoop around, the chin, and then added some shading and some ears. But I can now recreate that, that image over and over again. As a matter of fact, this is a more simplified version. It's really only a few quick lines, but it gives me kind of that feel of the cat that I could definitely easily redo this over and over again. I could then start working the jaw and the chin and the eyes and the ears and move it around. It's only a few parts that I can really get in there and start playing with the whole idea of the caricature or the character of the cat. And so that's where I like to go with my drawings. Use Photoshop as a great tool to create that base and start almost like a sculptor whittling away and finding those areas that I like of the animal and creating the character out of that animal so that then I could use it. And now this, this guy's kind of my own. He's not an actual true representation of a cheetah, but he's got that cheetah feel to it. Maybe a cross between Chester Cheetah and uh, the Pink Panther. So anyway, that's kind of a, how I play around with Photoshop to get in there and to create some new characters that I can work with in any stories or whatever. And I just thought it'd be a neat thing for you to be able to see kind of my process in that. So hmm. there you go. All I hear is the Pink Panther theme in my head now. Thank you. All right, uh, let's take a quick break. I'm going to come right back. I've got a feature in Photoshop you probably didn't even know was there. So uh, hang with us. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back, and don't forget about tonight, we're doing the Photoshop World-a-thon, and it's going to be to help you get excited and informed about what Photoshop World is. We're definitely excited about seeing y'all in Vegas, September 3rd through 5th. That's, that's right. It's going to be a, of course, it's always the who's who of Photoshop and photography instructors, and we're going to be in uh, the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas again. And that's what tonight's event is about, is really just getting you aware and just giving you a taste of what you're going to see and who you're going to see at the event. So be sure to check that out at photoshopworld.com. Now, Pete. Hey, Corey. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, do you have a tip for us? I do. Um, actually, this is something, um, it's it been in Photoshop probably in the last couple of versions, but it's probably something you didn't even know was there because it's kind of in a not so obvious place. And it's actually a pretty interesting feature. Now, let's just say I've got a scene here and I want to add a tree, perhaps, in this scene. Well, I could go and find a stock image of a tree that might be the right kind of thing I'm looking for. It may not be. But if you just simply go in and create a new blank layer and just do a regular fill, and that's just a matter of going under the Edit menu and choosing Fill. Now, we know we use this all the time for things like doing a neutral gray fill or black and white and everything like that. But you can also do a pattern. 
Now, previously when you would select pattern, you would only have access to this custom pattern filter, which you probably recognize as being in the layer style panel. I, but use, they, I use the bubble pattern all the time. Bubble all the time. What, what can you not do with that? So what they've added down here at the very bottom is these scripted patterns. Now, if it's unchecked uh, normally by default, but if you go ahead and check it on, and you have a menu here of these different types of scripted pattern fills. You've got like a brick fill or cross weave. You know, these, all these are pretty cool, but there's one actually here called tree. Now, interestingly, when you select this, you click OK, you're going to get a new panel to show up. And what this is is a menu of various trees. Now, I know nothing about trees. I have no idea what a pepper tree is or a young robinia, if that's what it's, how it's pronounced, nice. like that. But it does show you a preview. So what you can do is actually go and select a particular type of tree. And you can adjust the lighting direction by moving this slider. You'll notice this little preview here. Adjust the lighting direction of the tree. And you can add leaves. You can actually have it be a nice, um, plush, healthy tree or something like that. You can actually minimize that, make it very fewer leaves. Or bring it all the way down to where it has no leaves. It's pretty much a dead tree. And you can uh, adjust some of these other rendering settings. And here, and here is the arrangement. I haven't fully figured out what arrangement does yet. I move the slider back and forth and I hit OK. It doesn't really show a preview. I'm assuming it adjusts the arrangement of the branches because I, I get a slightly different configuration of the tree every time um, as I play with it. So the arrangement is, uh, is just simply that. I'm just going to go and leave it at that, though. But I'm going to go back to my favorite, which is the pepper tree, because it's creepy. It's just got all these weird branches and everything like that. Of course, when the leaves are not there. So, And given our scene here, it's going to need to be a dead tree because all the grass is dead and everything like that. So. Let's look at the lighting in the scene. So let's make sure that my lighting is coming from the right direction, which it is over here on the left side. And I'll just go ahead and click OK. Now, it's going to take a little bit of a, a minute to render the tree. It's, uh, it's usually pretty quick, depending on your file size. This is a pretty small file, so. So I can make comments like, too bad it's not a salt and pepper tree. <laughs> or is that a brick house? Yes. She's a brick. It's a brick, brick house. All right, so now it brings it in and put, pay, um, basically puts it on the layer. I'm going to actually position it right here next to the building. And if I zoom in here, I'm going to do a little trick. Here's a little refined edge trick. If you just select around the base of the tree, and we'll select the background layer and do a refined edge, we can actually get a little bit of a gritty edge there. Contrast up. And it's only a selection, so I'm just going to use that as a layer mask to hide the base of the tree. Kind of blend it in with the, uh, the scene there. Let me unlink the layer mask there. I'm just going to nudge it down just a little bit. There. Now it's blending in nicely. Now, you can go ahead and let's go ahead and just make a selection of that um, tree just by command clicking on the layer. And I'm going to put a new layer underneath it. Now, cool trick. When you add a new layer, hold the command key down. It puts the new layer underneath your active layer. And let's go and get kind of a dark shadowy color here in the image. I'm just going to sample from a already existing shadow. And then we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Distort. I'm going to grab that top corner handle and just bring this down. And this will be the shadow of my tree. I'm just going to nudge that over a little bit there. And look at that. Now, if you really wanted to get detailed in here, and be a super nerd about it, you could probably select a portion of this upper area of the tree here and go ahead and copy that to a new layer, bring it over here, and flip it horizontally. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see where I'm going? I do. I like the voice that you're using, too. Do you see what That's I'm doing nice. here? We're just going to put that there. And I'm just going to drop the opacity a little bit. Looks like we got a little bit of the branches casting a shadow on the roof here, but we've got some excess here, so let's just take our eraser tool and get rid of that. And there we have our cool tree in our scene. Now, of course, you know, I could do a little bit more work to really help this blend in, but it's a really cool little thing yeah. in there. It's a neat little feature they've added, and it allows you to go in there and try different arrangements of leaves and different types of trees. And just with a few layer tricks, you can actually make it look that much more realistic if you just wanted to add something to a scene. And, and you could create a whole tree line. You could, just, If I wanted to put a whole tree line in the back scene here, I could do that just by creating multiples of different types of trees. And I will say, I use this very feature in a future article. I've got yeah, the Down and Dirty Tricks I do in the magazine. Um, 
did a kind of cool movie poster where I used the very same tree filter and created this scene here. It's, it's for the October issue, so it's Halloween. But I had this scene and used that very, tree, that very same tree fill to create, and actually used the same tree I just used a moment ago, and just added it to this scene and did some other atmospheric effects to really kind of make it look like a, it's a really creepy scene there. But no actual trees were used or harmed in the making of this poster. So. Well, and that's why I was excited that you were going to do that. I even asked if you were going to do that this morning mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't realize that that's in Photoshop mm -hmm. and how powerful that is. So I'm glad you showed that. Absolutely. So, all right. I think that moves us on. We're getting a little close to the end here. Yep. But uh, we have some giveaways. We have... First thing we should probably talk about is the Peach Pit deal. <coughs> we have another Peach Pit ebook e deal. deal. If you it, will go to peachpit.com and you will check it out, peachpit.com slash Kelby1. And this week we have Run and Gun Lighting Resource from Nick Fancher. And it's all about one light solutions for commercial and portrait photographers. So if you want to check that out, you'll get 40% off. Uh, your price is only 8 bucks. The list priced was $10. What a deal. It's a great deal. Make sure you check it out. Absolutely. Use the coupon code Kelby1 to get that deal, 40% off. Sweet. And now we have, for this week, presentation Zen Design by Gar Reynolds. And it's a, a simple visual approach to presenting in today's world. And if you want to learn more about design and how to set stuff up to make good presentations, make good presentations. presentations make great it. presentations. Uh, that's a book for you. How do they win this, Corey? They will win it by going to kelby1.com slash podcast, I believe it's slash podcast, slash contest. <laughs> Do we have the page up there? No. Nope. Oh, you got it. You got it. Go to kelby1.com slash contest. Go in there. Find the drop-down menu. Go to Photoshop User TV. Log in your name. Your, Here we are. There we go. So Log go right in, in the menu. Name. Select the show, Photoshop User TV. Enter your name and a comment. Just entering your name is enough, but we'd love to hear from you. What you want to see or not see, anything like that. We've Just actually gotten a couple good jokes out of this. Got a, got a few good jokes, actually. I want to share them on the show, uh, so we'll do that on a later show there. So if you've got a joke, comment, suggestion, anything like that, please let us know. All right. I do believe that wraps it up again this week. Thank you guys for joining us. Do not forget to check out the Photoshop Worldathon again tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to the be website, check it square. out. Make sure you sign up for all the fabulous prizes we're going to be giving away. We hope to see you there. Yep. Sort of. <laughs> we, hope, we hope you see us on the show. Whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>